So we'll talk about uh, the gap between knowledge and action or even better the gap between knowledge being able to do something and then finally doing it. So this gap between knowledge and action is one of the gaps that one needs to bridge to bring something that we know into our lives. <clears throat> we live in this age of the internet, Wikipedia, Google, almost anything we want to know we can find out. So knowledge itself, which a hundred years ago knowledge was very scarce. We didn't know why we got sick, we didn't know about germs, we didn't know about viruses, we didn't know what kind of foods to eat, but now knowledge is pervasive and the value of knowledge itself has become very low. Knowledge is almost free. You can almost ask any question about how to eat well, how to rest, how to exercise, how to interact with people and you can find their answers. So knowledge itself has become almost valueless and the value of a pundit who tells you how to do things has become almost negligible because we all know. Every year when New Year comes about, millions of us make promises to ourselves that will bring some changes in our life. So knowledge is there but being able to act on the knowledge is very difficult. And one of the purposes of yoga is to close that gap between knowledge which is the first limb of yoga, yam. Yam is knowledge, knowing what to do and closing that gap between knowledge and action. So the second limb of yoga is the most important and useful tool. And the second limb of yoga is niyam. And niyam stands for, loosely translated in English, stands for discipline. But discipline that you choose yourself. So you want to do something, you want to act on something, you have some knowledge, I want to eat well, I want to eat healthy food, I want to eat fruits, vegetables, I don't want to eat junk food, I don't want to eat candy. But you find that you are drawn to that kind of food and it's available. Right? Or you want to rest for 7-8 hours, you don't want to feel tired during the day, you don't want to feel sleepy. So something that you have decided to do, you want to exercise regularly. To make it happen, niyam is the most essential part of the next step. So knowing is the first step, but that's become so uh, valueless because everybody knows. People who are heavy, people who are not exercising, people who are not acting in their own self-interest, they know what to do. So the second part, which is niyam, becomes the most important. So what is niyam? Niyam is essentially removing choices from your life. So loosely translated, what Niyam does is removes choices from your life, but voluntarily. Not somebody else removing choices because if somebody else takes away your choices, you feel really bad, you feel out of control. It's ourselves removing choices from our lives. Right? So removing choices so that certain paths that you don't want to take are eliminated from your life, pretty much removed. because. If those paths are still there, your brain will take you into those paths. So removal of choices becomes very important just because the way our brain is wired. So it's a little bit, it's important to understand how our brain functions because our brain and then our mind makes us take choices, helps us take choices. The brain has two main categories of how it makes decisions. The first one is the logical brain. So the brain is logical, it's thinking. Once you understand something, it acts on those choices. It's a logical brain. But the second, more dominant brain is the instinctive brain. It's the hardwired brain. Something that we acquired from millions of years of being on this planet. And the hardwired brain often does not respond to logic. It responds to things. So it responds to sugar. We know sugar is not good for us or too much sugar is not good for us. We know junk food is not good for us. Frank, French fries are not good for us. But the hardwired brain takes those choices because for millions of years that choice was the right choice. Choice of food that is sugary, high in fat was the right choice because there was scarcity of food and we needed calories to just survive. So these two parts of the brain are constantly working 
the instinctive part, the hardwired part, and the logical part. So logical part often gets overridden by the instinctive part. But if you have removed the choices, there's no choice to take those. So it, removal of choices, so removal of, for example, junk food from your life. So when you go shopping, just not buying certain kind of food, just buying fresh food. So when you are hungry, you don't have the option of grabbing uh, a clump of M&Ms and eating them. Right? And similarly, so that's the first part and you have to do it. So I remove certain choices, you remove certain choices. So that's the first part of Niyam, just removing certain choices. Now, that has to be done very consciously, intelligently, so your certain choices are just not available. The second part of Niyam is also reminder, constant reminder, because you may have in mind, like this is what I'm going to do through the day, but often it slips out of the mind and you do something else. So just having that Niyam or discipline of constantly reminding yourself, which means every half an hour reminding yourself how you want to run your day. And in Rasa Yoga, we often say, get up from whatever you're doing and take two or three pranayam breaths. So take, that's a reminder. So you're working in your desk all day and every half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour, you just step away from your desk and you open your chest and you just do some simple breathing, right? So you do some posture, and what that does is takes a break from what you were doing and you do something else. So that's a reminder. So reminder Niyam, where you constantly are doing something that reminds you that this is what I have planned to do. And so it brings you back to that moment. So it brings you back. Uh, and so that's a reminder Niyam. So the first one was removing choices. Second one was reminder or Simran. So the word is Simran, reminding ourselves, constantly reminding ourselves till it becomes integrated into our body and I'm going to eat fresh food, I'm going to have vegetables, and I'm going to limit my intake of junk food, I'm going to limit my intake of uh, alcohol, for example, or other things, whatever you want. So just a reminder of that. The next part of the Niyam is to make choices that you don't like very expensive. So taking a penalty, bringing a penalty, again, a volunteer penalty, and you have to decide what is the penalty. So if I fall off my Niyam, I'm going to place a penalty on myself. Just like when you're, I'm driving on the road and I go through a red light, policeman gives me a penalty that makes my driving better next time, except it's not, there's no police involved, it's yourself. So choose a penalty that if I'm going to do this and I don't, I have planned not to do this, I'm going to penalize myself. And the penalty could be, maybe I'll spend an hour extra working out so I'm going to do an extra hour of workout and that is the penalty so it's a good penalty it's not a bad penalty it's a good penalty or I'm going to take my friend out treat them that's a good penalty so some kind of penalty you impose on yourself when you make the wrong choice so the next time your brain is a little more wired towards not doing that thing and finally there's also if you do the good thing, reward yourself. Right? So reward mechanism, so just like there's a penalty mechanism for something you don't want to do, a reward mechanism for something you want to do. So these four elements, removing choices, constant reminder, penalizing yourself in the right way when you do something that you don't want to do, and then rewarding yourself, celebrating, rewarding yourself. Those are all parts of the Niyam, and that allows one to close the gap between knowledge and action.